Greetings, everyone. This is Eric Hong, Executive Director of the Momiji Healthcare Society, speaking to tenants of our seniors' residents and their family in regards to COVID-19. It was mid-September when I last spoke to you. Earlier this year, when the COVID pandemic first hit Toronto, we heeded the advice of public health and imposed various measures in the hope of minimizing risk of infection spread into Momiji and keeping everyone here safe. We shut down non-essential programs and activities throughout Momiji. We stopped it non-residents from entering Momiji except for essential visits by tenants, family, or by critical service providers. We advised tenants to self-isolate as much as possible. We screened all visitors to Momiji, adjusted staff deployment, mandated use of personal protective equipment, including face masks and other items, and imposed stringent infection prevention and control measures. When community spread of COVID-19 seemed to have eased over the summer, we supported for everyone to relax a bit and to emerge from isolation. We suggested for you to spend time outdoors to enjoy the fresh air and warm weather. We encouraged cautious re-engagement with family and friends, brought back limited amount of seniors' active living center activities, but refrained from allowing access into Muiji by non-residents. Towards the end of July, we had arranged for tenants and staff to be tested on site for COVID. We were very encouraged by the result that everybody who got tested proved to be infection free. However, this past month has seen some unwelcome development. The number of new cases of COVID-19 in Toronto and Ontario has been found to be increasing at an alarming rate. While the average daily count of new COVID cases had dropped as low as under 10 in Toronto at one point in the summer, it has now rebounded up to almost 300 per day. It has been worrisome enough to have prompted provincial government to reimpose some stringent restrictions on social activities that it had only recently relaxed. Among other restrictions the government has once again imposed, they have shut down indoor dining at restaurants limited the number of people allowed together in private parties, and stopped public events where larger number of participants would have been expected, among other measures. Momiji has prepared itself to respond to this wave two of the pandemic. Our goal continues to be to keep everyone safe while maintaining quality of life as much as possible. We have contingency measures ready for implementation if and when necessary. For now, seniors' active living center programs with under 10 participants involved are still going to take place. Staff facilitated and monitored activities are still being supported. Meals continue to be delivered to tenants' apartments instead of having them come together in the restaurant. Virtual programs are being developed and offered as they become ready. Larger group activities, unfortunately, have had to be suspended for now. That included the Issei Day celebration, Japonica, and a clothing sale that had originally been planned for early October. In-person attendance at the annual general meeting of Momichi Healthcare Society has also had to be cancelled. It will now be conducted entirely online on October 27th. A notice will have been sent to all tenants in the seniors' residence. It invites you to either attend online or to assign your proxy for someone who will cast your vote for you online. We are advising that you refrain from going out into the community and to limit the number of people you interact with. We would also urge that family and friends of tenants not to visit in groups. Please limit visitors to your apartment at Momiji to two persons per visit. If you are planning to go out or stay out overnight while visiting with others, please speak to Yuka, Akane, or others in the Support Services Department beforehand. They will advise you of precautions and safety measures, including what you might have to do upon returning to Momiji. Everybody anticipated there to be a wave two of the pandemic, and that it would arrive at the same time as the regular flu season, which is about now. That time and that wave two of COVID-19 infections is already here. 
together and collaboratively by being careful and complying with the various safety measures that have been put into place, we have weathered wave one of the pandemic very well. We made it through without anyone, client or staff, catching the COVID infection. Let us do that again together and stay safe and well through this wave two of the pandemic that is now upon us. It is by all of us conscientiously being mindful, complying with the various infection prevention and control measures, even if that means enduring some inconveniences, that we will succeed in protecting each other from the devastating disease that is COVID-19. Thank you.